All right, so today we are going to be taking a look at some of the weirdest stadium corks throughout history, just some weird, unique features of stadiums that I think are super unique after doing some research and finding a few articles. Some of these stadiums are still in use. Actually, I think all of these stadiums to a degree are still in use, but some of the features have now been removed. Just take a look at seven or eight different really unique features. Starting with the Germany Olympic Park stainless steel cable nets, which were installed back in 1972. These things look like saw traps. When I saw these, I mean, so apparently the situation surrounding this, they're insulated with some type of acrylic that's supposed to shield the sun from the crowd. And this was 1972 during the Olympics when the Olympics finally went back to Germany for the first time after the 36 Olympics. They went back and this is like the new German technology of 1972. They were supposed to shield the crowd or shield the sun away from the crowd along with protecting the crowd from the overall elements. And it just looks freaky, the overall structure of these. It looks like you're walking into some type, again, some type of saw trap or something. From the sky, they kind of look like big plastic trash bags that are that are kind of surrounding the overall stands. And they were used by stands and they were made from a combination of stainless steel cable nets and acrylic glass with supports. So that is a, a very unique feature there that was done in 1972, kind of their newer technology there in Germany for the Summer Olympics. Moving on to the next, we've got possibly the worst multi-purpose stadium you could ever imagine, Exhibition Stadium in Canada, which was the home to a few different XFL teams back in the 80s, and then also the Blue Jays played there for 12 years throughout the entire 80s, and my goodness, you I mean, like imagine this happening in the MLB today. Honestly, I've seen middle school baseball parks better than this. The entire right field is just a wall and then beyond that, it's the football field. I mean, this is next level crap. And this is probably the worst multi-purpose stadium I've seen. You can see how the stands kind of branch out and they keep going. It's the same thing you see with the Carrier Dome for Syracuse where the stands keep going. And you actually saw it a little bit. Candlestick Park had the same type of thing as well. It's like the wall changes, but the stands keep going because it's multi-purpose and they can't move those stands in. At, at least, we all know the multi-purpose stadiums are terrible, but they would either build them in like a do in like a circle donut, you know, like all the cookie cutters and things like that, so it was very easy. You didn't have to move any of the seats, or they would have a process to where you would move seats in from the outfield, whether it's the Metro Dome with folding the seats up, or, you know, with the Coliseum where they would also fold the seats up. Here, it's just they're stationary, and you can just see them, and the wall goes around just like any MLB outfield wall, but the stands don't follow. Right? And it just looks so bad. So that was ex. It's funny. It's called Exhibition Stadium. It's kind of an oxymoron. It's like can you, you really can't play a, a real game there. You're playing it at Exhibition Stadium. But no, they played actual MLB games. And, and I always remember that one photo of the snow. And I think that might have been... That was opening day, I believe there in Canada, if I remember that correctly. And let me just tell you, current day, uh, the Blue Jays have said they're actually moving back in. So that, you know, they said we're done with Rogers Center. They're trying to renovate it. They're sick of it. They said, we're just going to move back in to Exhibition Stadium. We like the looks of it. I'm kidding. You know, this thing's been knocked. This thing was demolished back in, I think, 2000. 
it was demolished. So it is down, and, and that's just kind of a unique stadium, Cork. Possibly the worst multi-purpose stadium I have seen because it doesn't even move. None of the seats move, and it just looks terrible when it's in baseball mode. Next, we're going to talk about Mimbap. Next, we're looking at Mimbatho Stadium in South Africa. And let me just say, probably the most unique soccer stadium design when it comes to seating imaginable. I really hope a North American architect takes these layered tier seats and somehow brings them, whether it's an MLB stadium, NFL, whatever, bring it to North America Stop with these cookie cutter stadiums. I know it's the new day and age with the NFL where they all have to be the same. They've all got to be domes. They all have to have the same tiered seating and things like that. Let's make one of them really unique. I would actually love the NFL to go to South Africa to play in this stadium. I'm sure it's far too old and it would never pass inspection. But it's just that the way they do the seating, the tier layer seating is just so cool. And it, it's kind of, you know, like, imagine getting tickets to one of these sections. It's like, it's it's your own isolated section within the game. Of course, th this would need, like, massive renovation. I mean, just looking at the way the stands are shaped, it's a, it, it looks less comfortable than most college bleachers. But... That just kind of comes with the territory with soccer in South Africa. That's whatever. You know, overall, I'm more interested and intrigued with the very cool design of this stadium. And it was constructed in 1981, holds just under 60,000 people, which is basically, honestly, kind of what NFL stadiums are holding. We've got the new Bills Stadium with 60K. And, of course, the very unique and cool design of the tiered level seating, almost like pebbles leading up, each section being its own unique space. And it looks really cool when it's full. So there is that. Next, we're looking at the Municipal Stadium in Portugal that has an overhanging cliff. Apparently, this stadium was built out of a quarry. And you can see the overall cliff right there. Kind of reminds me of, I, I don't know if it's BYU's football stadium, but it, there's a stadium in college where there's a cliff right near it. It might be in Montana. I don't know. But yeah, this is definitely more extreme than that for sure. I mean, this thing is literally a 90 degree angle. The stands are right up against it. I think some of those people sitting there might be a little anxious for like a rock slide or something. I mean, you know what's... Uh, it also reminds me of Arizona State Stadium where it's located. It's located like right near a, a, a decent sized mountain. So, but but again, it's not nearly as aggressive as this. I mean, this is literally built right into the side of a quarry. And apparently the movement of the rocks was the biggest contributor to this stadium's cost. Just looking at the seating, it's very bland. It looks like any run of the mill you know, normal European soccer stadium, but of course it being built where it is into the side virtually of a quarry makes it extremely cool. The next one we're looking at is the floating stadium located in Singapore. This one, you know, I think they just did it to do it. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but it's really not practical at all. It's just, you know, it's, it's a stadium on the water. It'd be cool if they played an NFL game there or a college football game there, but obviously the capacity is extremely limited considering only the one side can have any uh, fans. It only holds 30K, but the idea that you're surrounded by water, the one thing you really got to be worried about when it comes to playing like right near that water, you got to be worried about mosquitoes and things like that. It doesn't look like there's any netting or anything. I mean, you would have to bathe yourself in some of that anti-mosquito repellent. Although apparently all that stuff has cancer. It's called coming out that uh, all that stuff has cancer. I don't know. But you'd have to do something because, uh, yeah, that is probably really bad. Especially at night, you go out and you play soccer I don't even know. Do they have lights out there? Oh, yeah, they do have lights. Maybe they do have late-night soccer matches out there. 
on the water. The next thing, this is just, this would never happen. Well, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't say that. This is a lazy pool, and this is the Fresco Minor League Baseball Team. I don't know what affiliate this is. It might be Double A. This was built back, I believe, in 2017. It, they just decided, you know what? YOLO. It's the minor leagues. No one cares. Let's go and build a lazy river right up against the right field wall. And it's kind of similar to the thing with Chase Field where they have the pool, but it's bigger. It's it's a literal lazy river. So, uh, something like this. There's no way this would be done, though, in the MLB. I mean, you have the pool with Chase Field, but it's a very small area. I mean, this takes up the entire right field seating area, and it's just super unprofessional. I mean, it's a lazy river, right? I, I don't think, you know, it, I, I don't know, but... You know, I guess if it's minor league, there's nothing wrong with it. You want to have some fun. And they just decided, you know what? We're just going to build a lazy river at this minor league park. So there that is right there. And then the final one we're going to be looking at is the Alligator Stadium, which is literally just an alligator located in Turkey. I wonder how it did with the earthquake. Let's hope it survived. But I'll tell you what, this is the perfect example when you see the renderings of it, I think that's a rendering. I do not think that is a real photo. I believe it's a rendering. It, the green looks really cool there. And then there's another rendering of it. And the renderings look really cool. And then you look at it in real life. And it just looks super tacky. It does. And like the alligator head, I'm not sure if that's the entrance. It'd be kind of cool if that was the entrance. But I don't think it is. I just think it's like a random just kind of out of place turnaround for fans. Like, wh what is the alligator's head supposed to be? Just, I think it was built maybe later as an add-on, but either way, it is unique. The interior is just your simple soccer stadium. It is known as the alligator stadium. And then you can see on Wikipedia, it all it says, this is all it says on Wikipedia, the venue has a large crocodile's mouth. That's all it says. <laughs> so it just, they just randomly built a crocodile's mouth into the stadium. And you can kind of see that the overall shape of it, I guess, is the tail. I, I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But that is a cool, unique feature kind of stadium cork right there. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.